Praise God. Praise All right. Y'all going to help me again this week. All right. Yes. All right. Simply about loving him. I really love the Lord. Come on, help me out. Things out of order. Right. 
You will know it's to come upon you. You will not know it's this. So those of you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Numbers, the fourth book of Moses, chapter 10. Amen. Numbers chapter 10, beginning with the 29th verse. Thank God for my bibliographer being here. I thought Pastor Nathan was going to have to pull double duty. <laughs> For a second, praise God. Numbers 10, chapter 29. Um, chapters 10, chapter 10, verse 29. I know when you say amen. amen. So you don't have to say, hold on. Amen. Let me read that. Let us look, look at it. Now Moses said to Hobab, the son of Ruel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are setting out for the place of which the Lord said, I will give it to you, come with us, and we will treat you well, for the Lord has promised good things to Israel. And he said to him, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land and to my relatives. I'm reading out the New King James Version. That's why you're hearing you yours and mine, not thee, thou and thine. So Moses said, please do not leave inasmuch as you know how we are to camp in the wilderness and you can be our eyes. And it shall be if you go with us, indeed, it shall be that whatever good the Lord will do to us, the same we will do to you. Acts 13. One through three. For New Testament application. Amen. Acts 13, verses one through three. <coughs> now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, Simeon who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, who had been brought up with the hair of the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Let us pray. You may be seated. Merciful God and Father, as we approach your word, once again we approach reverently and respectfully in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you, Lord God, to take these lips of clay of mine, pouring your oil upon them, and that as I speak, I speak as the oracles of God. Make my tongue a pen of a ready writer. And as always, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I bind Satan, principalities, powers, the rules of the darkness of this world, spiritual weakness in high places. I loose the spirit of deliverance and healing. Lord God, I even thank you for reconciliation. And now, Father, I decrease that you may increase. Holy Spirit, have free course. In this place, there will be none of me but all of you. And always, as always, Lord, I give you praise. I give you praise. Thank you for your spirit within and this real without. Thank you for the anointing and thank you for every gift being in operation according to your will and your purpose. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Numbers chapter, back to Numbers chapter 10, verse 36. We're going to use for a title, now catch this, Reclaiming Your Prophetic Heritage. Reclaiming Your Prophetic Heritage. See, when you have a claim on something, 
that means it's already yours. But if you have to reclaim it, that means somewhere along the way, you lost it. And reclaiming your prophetic heritage which means you weren't taught about. How can you do something that you aren't taught of? David said it like this. I cannot use these for I have not been properly trained to use them. Amen. When he was about to deal with the giant. I don't mean the big show, but I mean this giant. Amen. That they call the life of God. Now, Moses is talking to his brother-in-law. And he knows, he says, now Moses said to Hobab, the son of Ruel, the Midianite. Uh, Midianite, no offense to the other three, the three that are here, look like you and me. They look like you and me. Amen. Moses' father-in-law, now I'll tell you, that's Jethro. Jethro. We are setting out for a place on which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Notice the Lord said, I'm giving this to you. Amen. Okay. Come with us and we will treat you well. For the Lord has promised good things to Israel. I say, how many know that that's for you? I mean, that's for you. And he said to him, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land and to my relatives. Why? Because he felt that he had no part in it. He says, I'm a Hamite. I'm a descendant of Ham. I have no part in this. Praise God. But... Here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. He goes anyway. Because this is how Moses encourages him. So Moses said, please do not leave me inasmuch as you know how we are to camp in the wilderness. And you can be our eyes. What do prophets do? They cease. You can be our prophets. You can be our watchmen. You can be our seer. Watchmen, what of the night? Why? Because when, when the Lord told Ezekiel that he was a watchman, he was to do this. He was to warn the righteous man if he fell into sin to turn around and repent. And God said, if you didn't do it, the blood is on your hands. People of God, you gotta understand, this is a prophetic heritage that you have. It was passed on down from Abraham. Abraham is the first known prophet of the Bible. Read your Bible, Genesis. Read the book of Genesis a little later on when you get home. I don't want you to believe me. I want you to believe what the word of God said. When he was dealing with Abimelech. And, he, and God told Abimelech, he's a prophet. So it is a prophetic heritage. And indeed, it shall be if you go with us. And even she that shall be that well, the Lord will do good, the Lord will do to us the same we will do to you. That sounds like I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse them that curse you. That's right. Therefore, you've got to reclaim what's yours. Now last week I thought OG 
You don't have to fight for it. All you gotta do is show up. Okay, now it's time to collect. It's collecting time. It's gathering time. It's harvest time. All right. All right. So you got to get this prophetic heritage. Prophetic. How do I know it's prophetic? Jesus says, believe that you receive in your hand. And Jesus said, whosoever shall say unto this mouth. Why? Because prophets speak. What does say of the Lord? They speak the word. Majority time become in a corrective state. Why? Because if you look at Jeremiah chapter 1, he tells them, he tells them he got to deal with some hard-hearted, stiff-necked folk. But he told them, don't be afraid of the looks on their faces. Why won't some of us go tell somebody about Jesus? We are afraid of the looks on their faces. Jesus who? Oh man, that's a myth. Don't you know now Jesus never existed? That's what they tell the folks nowadays. All you gotta do is turn on the history channel. All you gotta do is, is go on YouTube they teach him that, that, he never, that he never existed historically. Where for generations upon centuries, people knew that if, even if they didn't believe in the gospel Jesus, the biblical Jesus, they believed in the historical Jesus. You got to reclaim your prophetic heritage. Wasn't Jesus counted as a prophet? Amen. Is he the head? Amen. Are we the body? That's right. That's right. Reclaim your prophetic heritage. Come on. Come on. Now, I'm going to show you something. Come on. 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 Come Well, how come other sons of Ham? Why weren't they cursed? You gotta read, you gotta read, you gotta study. You gotta do your research. Why? Because if you study yourself to show yourself approved under God, you'll be a workman. And you will not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, folks, don't you know what it means to look upon your father's naked? And they were children, born children, and I say it in a way that they would, that y'all, because they didn't understand it, but I can't say it because I'm respectful of children, because the children in the house. But go and look at Leviticus 18 when you get home and see what it means to look upon your father's name. See, I usually preach this thing with a different, on a different subject, but a different way. During the month they give us. <laughs> but every day is African American History Month for me. Because I've been doing it for 48 years. I've been living history, I've seen things down through the years. But uh, the good thing about it is I love to study the history of, of our people in the Bible. And a lot of it, a lot of it, a lot of it is so blessed. Read about Ruth, read about Esther, read about the Queen of Sheba, read about Rahab, read about Bathsheba, read about Solomon, read about Jesus, read about the prophet Zephaniah, the son of Hushai. My God, my God.